up to a feeding of water my tarantulas. I really hope you guys enjoy. Love the filter. Right, so this is the second half of my video. So this is my Lassiodora clue guy. I absolutely love this species, probably because it has my name in it. The common name is Bayer Scarlet or Bahi Scarlet, and my name happens to be Scarlet, so I'm super excited. This one's abdomen is very black, so and it's also completely refusing food, so I do suspect it's probably pre-molt, although its abdomen is not shiny and f particularly fat right now, so I'm not I'm not entirely sure um, on on this or not. I will try to feed it, but I really do think it's going to refuse. Please ignore if there's any noise in the background. My baby's in the room while I'm doing this voiceover, so if you hear some squealing, it's my baby girl. <laughs> yep, so there we go, some giggling from my baby girl. Oh, this one doesn't look too happy about me offering it food. It's got its front legs up. Don't be mean. Do you want it? It looks interested, but it's just not feeding. I'm starting to wonder whether maybe I should offer this one a hide. I was told that it probably wouldn't use it, but I've noticed that my Lassiodora Parabana was the same until I offered it a hide. So, oh, I'm really, really sorry about that squealing, guys. Yeah, so I'm I'm wondering if, if what do you guys think? Do you think I should maybe alter its enclosure and offer it a hide? It doesn't seem a particularly fearful tarantula. It seems to move around quite well and it doesn't sort of run off. So I'm not sure. Let me know. Um, this species is pretty docile, not particularly aggressive. Its venom is not bad at all. It's terrestrial. Um, this would probably make quite a nice beginner species. It's really, really lovely when it grows up. It's got some sort of reddish tinting to its, um, to its hairs. <laughs> Right, so let's move on. I think I'm going to go with my Postal Ethereum Metallica next. I'm actually going to leave um, the worm in there with it just for now. I always leave it in for a few hours, leave it alone, come back and then see, um, see, see what's happened. Yes, so we're going to move on to my Postal Ethereum Metallica. This species is an old world arboreal species. You do not want to be bitten by this species. Oh look, you can just about see the blue coming through. Um, you do not want to be bitten by this species. This species is also incredibly fast. It's almost got teleportation techniques, although that's pretty common with arboreal and old world species. However, I do go by the rule that they are more afraid of you than you are of them. It will not, Marcy, sorry guys. It will not bite you unless provoked or unless you particularly stick your finger in there. I always go by the saying of don't poke the pokey if you don't want to be bitten. So just remember that. No poking the pokey. Okay, guys? No. <laughs> See, my child agrees. No poking the pokey. I'm sorry, this is so unprofessional with the screaming in the background, but she's seven months old and I'm afraid I cannot stop her from making that horrendous noise. If I go into another room, she'll probably cry. <laughs> so, yeah, I have tried to feed my Postletheria post Metallica, but as I've said before, with some of my slings, they don't seem to be feeding particularly well right now. Um, I'm going to keep offering. I think a few of them are, in fact, in pre-malt. I also think that I need to get some dubia roaches. I have been trying with worms and pinheads and fruit flies, but none of my slings seem to be taking to this. I think the pinheads and fruit flies are way too small for some of the sizes of these slings, but I think that these worms are too big. So I think I need to get myself a dubia roach colony and so that I can use the small babies to feed my slings and the bigger ones to feed my adults. I do have a cricket colony, but if I'm honest, I'm absolutely hating it because they absolutely bloody stink. They are honking. It is so gross. So I don't think that I'm going to keep with the cricket colony. Or maybe I'll do a bit of both. But I'm really not enjoying the whole the whole cricket keeping. Um, I'm actually going to re do a rehousing video of this P Metallica um, at some point 
over the weekend because I have some better arboreal enclosures for it now, which I had been making. Yes, I made them. Well, it's cheating. I didn't make them. I have some tubs and I put my own vents in. That's about as far as my making skills go. But that's exactly what I've done. And I'm going to rehouse my um, Carabena Versicola, previously known as Aviculera Versicola. And I'm also going to rehouse my Postlotheria Metallica. So let's put the lid on this one. I don't think we're going to get much more entertainment out of this one, I'm afraid, guys. I cannot wait to show you it when they're much bigger. So let's move on. I am now going to show you my... Uh, oh, oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. So let's move on. Okay, so this is my Carabena Versi colour. This is probably one of my favourite arboreal species. It, as a baby, it's super fluffy and it's blue. And anybody who says that a tarantula cannot be cute really needs to have a look at this spider. It's absolutely beautiful and I think it's so, so sweet and so pretty. Bear in mind it can still bite, although if it did, it really wouldn't be the end of the world. This does not have a nasty potent venom. It might hurt a little bit, the initial bite, although again, not really much as a sling, maybe when it's a bit bigger. The colouring on this thing as it gets bigger is going to be incredible. I won't spoil it. Go and Google it yourself, Carabana Versicolor, because it can be just a whole host of absolutely amazing colours. And I hope to get more Aviculera species in the near future, or at least I think that's what they're still calling them. Um, there has been a revision on what they are, are being called. So let's go ahead and try and feed my Aviculera. Again, I do think this is too big for it. As I've said, I've tried pinheads, I've tried dubias, uh, not dubias, sorry, I've tried pinheads, pinhead crickets, and I've tried these worms, and I'm having absolutely no luck with some of my slings compared to others. So, and some of them do seem interested, so I am I am going to make sure that I pick up some extra stuff at the at the expo this Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and get myself some bin weevils because they can't bite, so I'm quite happy to leave them in overnight so that the tarantula can feed at its own will. And I'm also going to get some dubias, potentially a whole load of dubias, so that I can start my dubia roach colony. Hopefully they don't smell as bad as the crickets, because honestly, guys, I've never smelled something so absolutely horrendous as cricket breeding and rearing. Awful. Look at that baby. How can you not love that baby? That is so pretty and so cute. I have held this one. Um but I won't actually go and put my hand in there and take it out. I've held it when it's come scurrying out because it's really fast. Arboreals usually are. And that's the only time I've handled it is when it's come shooting out and climbed up my fingers. Not really concerned. It's pretty, these are usually non, you know, non-aggressive. Um, but we do have to be careful when, when sort of looking after any tarantula. Remember what I said, don't poke the bogeys. <laughs> So that goes with all tarantulas. Don't be messing with them and they won't mess with you. Some of them are a little bit more mean than others. But again, you're you're going into their home. That's their territory. And so you kind of have to expect for them to be a little bit annoyed. This enclosure, I'm going to be rehousing. It's a bit of a shame because I have glued those cork barks onto the side. But I will do that in the new enclosure. Um, just because the new enclosure is a lot nicer than this tub. This tub was basically used to be, it used to have um, cotton candy in it or candy floss, depending on where you're from. Um, so I've just drilled some holes in it, so I'm going to put that away. Right. I think this is pronounced Samapeus something something or other. I really forget the name of this one. Um, Venezuelan sun tiger. This is an arboreal, although it has been ground dwelling since I've got it. I've spoken to the person that I bought this from. Apparently that's quite normal. They'll basically just hide wherever they can. Absolutely stunning. This is probably one of my favourite looking um, because, well, it just is. I have attempted to feed a cricket, as you could probably see. It's not having any of it. It did recently molt around 11 days ago. It has eaten since then, but I do think this cricket is probably too big for it. So in a minute, you will see me attempting to get it out, and you'll actually get a better look at my um, at my Venezuelan sun tiger. Please go ahead and comment down the bottom what the scientific name is, because I always forget. There you go. Absolute beauty with the gold on its legs, and it has got some blue underneath the legs, although you cannot see very well. I do have a new GoPro um, that I could use, but I haven't quite learned how to 
um, edit the videos and add them together with my phone footage because I don't have a computer. I'm using a Surface and a mobile and I'm struggling to get it to upload. You can just about see the blue on the end of the legs right there. Okay, so moving on to something a little different. This is my Mantis. I believe this is a flower Mantis. It still doesn't really have an awful lot of um, look about it because it's it's only small. I have two of these, although I am only going to show you the one because they're both pretty much exactly the same. I'm hoping that one will be male and one will be female, but only time will tell. I am going to go ahead and feed this little guy as well. Um, you probably aren't going to see much. It's so tiny. I'm not really sure how much of this you'll actually see. So... There it is, in the corner, really easy to keep. This is basically a, a pint glass and the lid that just pops on, I've actually cut all of the plastic out of the top lid and then glued down um, wire mesh. So it's got massive, um, decent ventilation for a glass and I never get any buildup of humidity or sort of condensation on the side so I know that the humidity is doing well the substrate's always pretty dry I mist it down sort of two times a day um, not too much it's literally just so that the mantis has something to drink um, you can see all those fruit flies in there. It's fine that there are a fair amount of fruit, fruit flies in there because this little thing will eat them all up. I guarantee if I were to come back tomorrow and have a look, they would all be gone. Um, so I'm really, really not concerned about this guy. I haven't seen these molt yet. I, I'm pretty sure they do molt. I'm not as familiar with mantids as I am with tarantulas, but I believe they hang upside down and molt. So, um, so I'm really hoping that that happens soon because I'd, I'd really like to see some more colours from, from this little one and from my other one. You should be able to get a better shot of him now. There we go. They're so weird looking. They're like little aliens. I think they're absolutely awesome. And I hope to own some different ones in the future. Oh, there's my little pinhead cricket colony box. Disgusting. Nobody wants to see that. Absolutely rank. Oh, look, and I've got fruit flies running around all over my floor. Yep, that'll be fantastic to... Uh, explain to my partner why there's fruit flies running around the house but what can you do I can't help it where else am I supposed to put them so I think we'll be moving on in a minute because there's not really much more to see with this little one this you know that's kind of all it does it sits there it eats its little fruit flies and just chills basically I've seen it eat a few times I just think they're awesome they just look like mini aliens if you think of Independence Day it's basically just a miniature version of this um which I just think is, well, it's badass. I, I own a mini, mini alien. I just think, you know, how much more, how much more cool can you get? No, I'm joking. I'm a complete and utter nerd. I spend my days playing with tarantulas and inverts and playing PlayStation, along with being a full-time mum. So, yeah, I'm a bit of a nerd. Gosh, I forgot how long this video was. This is taking a little bit of time. I am just recording this mantis way too much and there isn't even anything to see. I think at this point I was trying to get a clip of it eating, but I don't succeed. So in the meantime, guys, when you, while you're watching this, why don't you comment down below with any decent TV series that you've liked to watch. I love Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, um, all that kind of stuff. If there's anything that you guys have watched recently that, you know, sort of fits along those lines, do let me know. I would absolutely love to know what it is and maybe give it a watch and let you know my thoughts on it. I am mad about my TV series. Oh, look, and there's my large colony of crickets. Absolutely minging. I'm not really sure why my camera's focused on that. I think at this point I'd maybe gone a bit brain dead and I was just not, not concentrating on what I was doing. I was thinking I was trying to get the lid back on of my mantis. So coming up shortly... Yeah, so I'm putting it away. You should see I'll be getting out my stick insect. Heteropyteri dilatata is the scientific name. Bit of a mouthful. Um, this is super easy to keep. Again, as you can see, it's basically just a plastic jar. This one's plastic, not glass. And I put mesh on the top. Really, really easy. Bit of substrate in the bottom. I use a mix of topsoil and vermiculite for all my tarantulas and inverts. And there is my stick insect, blending perfectly in with the rest of the sticks. Inside this enclosure is some planted ivy and some planted bramble. These are really docile. They can go into threat posture and sometimes what they'll do is they'll bend forward, stick their bum up in the air and part their back legs. Yes, I know that how that sounds, but that is exactly what they will do. 
and if you were to put your fingers between the back legs they snap them shut really really fast which can it can hurt i'm guessing i've not had it happen yet everyone i really hope you enjoyed the video thumbs up and comment down below if you did and um i'll try and reply to everybody and anybody who writes to me